Hi everybody, welcome to Biodiversity Week. This webinar is focused on making a little habitat for some of the creatures you learned about this week. So you've already learned about the bee, and learned how to make a little bee. You learned about ponds and about frogs and learned how to make a little frog. You learned about some of the trees and species that live around our trees and you learned about the swift. So we're going to make a little habitat that all of those different creatures and animals can live in um, and it's going to be a pop-up card like you can see here on the screen. Okay I'm going to pop that to the side for the moment and what you'll need today is you'll need a scissors, you'll need a stick glue, if you have a hole punch, a hole punch would be very handy today. Uh, a pencil, I'm going to use a pen today because it'll show up easier on the camera and it'll be easier to uh, for you to follow. And then something to draw around a circle. So I have a the top of a jar, but you could easily use some sellotape. Uh, something around that size is fine. And then I also have um, a small, I have a five cent coin for doing a smaller circle but you could use the top of your print stick as to make that circle okay so the other thing you need is some colored card and I have lots and lots of different types of card if you don't have colored card you can do all of this with just white card and then color it in afterwards so if there's a color here that you don't have don't worry about it you can color it in and we'll give you alternatives to coloring it in as well so I'm going to take these away and to start with we're going to just use our green and a blue card and we're going to make the back so instead of this white that I have here we're going to use blue and this part we're going to make green. So we'll start with the green and we'll pull the white and the blue out of the way and we're going to place it like this and we're going to get our corner like this and we're going to bring our corners all the way over so it's a folding it in half lining up the corners so you see the corners are joined up corners are joined up here we're going to place our hand on it there to keep it where it is and then we're going to flatten it out so flatten it out with our hand and bring our finger all the way down and we end up with a card shape line down the middle fold line down the middle easy fold punch fold in half we put the green away for the moment and we'll do the exact same with our blue sheet so like this getting our corners bringing this corner over here and this corner over here folding it in half so same thing that we did with the green card we're doing again with the blue cards corners are joined up putting our hand here to keep it bring our finger over and then following that line down and we get the same shape again line down the middle half and half okay we're putting that away leave it there for the moment we'll come back to our green so with our pop-up card if you look at the green in here and behind the trees in the house there's a little pop-up part and that's what we're going to do next okay so to do that we need to Take our pen and we need to draw a line like this and another line and we'll just like that one one more in the middle two and three it doesn't matter if they're narrow if they're wide you're not going to see them so about the size of my thumb is going to be fine for me okay so when we have that, we want to turn it. Now it's important, this is where the bend is that we're doing these lines, not where there's separation. So only where the bend is, we're drawing the lines. And then we're gonna get our scissors and we're gonna cut into these lines. So cutting at the bend, up until we meet that line, again, up until we meet that line, and we're stopping there. We're not doing any anything other than cutting out either side of these lines and then we're going to use this line here to fold this section that we just cut 
back on itself like this. Okay, that's one. We need to do that for three times. So we'll do it again here. One little cut, another little cut, using this line as the fold line, and we're folding it back on itself like that. Okay, and the same again. One last time, one cut, one cut, folding it back on itself. Okay, now we can bring these back down and open it up and we're left with what looks like this in the middle. Okay, what we want to do is get in behind this. So I'm bringing my finger in behind the part that we've cut and I'm gonna poke it up. Poke it up and then we'll bring it around and we'll pinch it in the middle. Okay, and we'll do the same for all three of these. So coming in from behind, poking it up with our finger and then pinching it in the middle. Same again, poking it up and then pinching it in the middle. Okay, and then when we fold it down, you'll see that we're left with spaces here. So you know you've done it right if it's like this. When we open it up again, we can see our pop-up section is complete. Now, if you look closely at the peak beat that we did already, the, the example that I have to show you at the start, you'll see there's a line down here. So it, the, the green doesn't come all the way up. So we need to make that line now. So to make that line, I'm gonna take this corner from the top and I'm gonna fold down the sheet until it meets the fold line in the middle, yeah? Fold it down till it meets the fold line and then I'm going to straighten it out like we did before we're flattening it out. And then we're folding that back. We're gonna pull these back out because we want them back out. We have a fold line here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut along that fold line. Like this. Now, any section that we cut out like this, we want to keep. We're gonna try and find a way to use that. Okay, so we put that to the side and we'll, we'll use it again. And now you can see that we have our grass, we have where our house and our trees are going, we have the background so the field in the background now we get our blue remember we took our blue and we folded it we took the sheet we folded it over we got our half and half and now we, what we want to do is we want to stick the green in to our blue so this is going to be our sky and this is going to be our grass and this is where all our pop-up things come so to do that we need to get our print stick and we want to Put our glue all over the bottom here. And only a little bit halfway up here, a couple of lines like that. And then we're going to stick this on. So we line it up so it meets in the middle and then we'll stick it up, stick it on. Now we don't want to stick these bits down, so make sure that they're standing up. We'll try and stick it up in this position. And we should be, we have our sky, we have our grass, and we have where our standing up parts are going to be. Okay, we're gonna put that to the side for a moment. We're gonna leave it there. What else did we have to make? So let's start with the sun that we have in the background. We're gonna stick a sun up here. So we need to cut out a circle. So how are we going to cut out a circle? Well, we're going to cut out the circles for the trees and for the sun all in the same way. And to do that, what we need to do is take our paper and we need to fold it into three different lines. So instead of bringing it all the way over, you're going to bring it over to about so, when we flatten it out, we're left with one space and another space here. And we're gonna fold this one over on top of that. Okay? So that when we fold it out, we're left with one, two, three. Three spaces and two fold lines. Then, we're going to put it back and we're gonna fold it in half this way. 
half up and we'll flatten it out. And if we opened it up, we'll do just once we'll open it up. We're left with six spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six little squares that we're going to manage to cut out circles out. So if we close it back up like this again, we put our circle in the middle and we'll draw it. So I am using this lid from a coffee jar, but you can use anything circular. It can be sellotape, it can be whatever you like. But we want it around the size of, of the middle of a sellotape or the top of a coffee jar. Not too big. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut it out. So we're going to keep it folded up, right? So when we cut this out, we'll actually end up with six circles. And that's really handy when you're working in a class. So one person could be doing this, cutting out all the suns, and they'll have enough suns for six different people. Okay? And that's handy, isn't it? So you don't all, all have to, you have to figure out how many people are in the room and then figure out how many suns you have to cut out because you can cut out six in one go. One, two, three, four, five, six and as i said we're going to keep these bits of, of paper that were left over we'll try and figure out a way to use them later okay so we'll take our one sun that i need we'll put these aside and then we will put our sun up here into the sky so how are we going to do that we need our print stick again we put our print stick up on the back of our sun like this and we stick it up there in the sky. Now, I saw someone drawing a nice face on it, so we might do the same. I'm gonna put a pair of sunglasses on my sun. And that's our happy sun up in the sky. Okay, and we put that to the side and we're going to do the same thing again, the exact same thing with our green to get our nice circles that we're going to use for our trees. So, same again, what did we do? We folded it from one side, not fully over, so it's about half the size each side, about the same size, and we flattened it down. And we did the same again, so folding it over on top of itself, and we flattened it down and then we did one more fold so we started from the bottom and we brought those corners all the way up to join at the top and we flattened it down and we got a square what did we do next i'm going to do it with sellotape this time so inside of the sellotape i'm going to do draw a circle around we have our circle we have our six folds so if we're cutting out one square of sheet, sheet of paper, we'll get six different trees from this. Now, I have two trees on my card, and you'll probably want two trees at least on your card. So if we cut out six circles, then that's enough for three different students to get enough for their trees. So we're doing mats even when we're we're not when we're doing art, we're still doing mats as well. Alright, we're gonna keep this bit. And remember, we said we'll use these bits when we can. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six circles, enough for three different students. Okay, so I'm gonna keep two of these for my trees, and I'm gonna use the others. We put them there for the side. What else do we need for our trees? We need tree trunks. So if you have some brown paper, not everyone will have brown paper. If you do, that's great. If you don't, you could cut it out of the yellow paper or you could cut out white paper and color it in brown. So what we need for our tree trunks, again, we remember we cut out these sections. We did them about thumb space. So we're gonna do the same. We'll look at our thumb and then we'll cut a line of brown just a strip all the way down the sheet, like this, cutting a strip off of brown, and that's going to be our tree trunks. So I'll put this card to the side, I'll use that again, and we want 
two different tree trunks so we need to trim this down so i'm going to go one short and one a little bit longer than that one long i have an extra one that can go to my buddy who's sitting next to me or i can cut it in half and give two to my buddy who's sitting next to me or we can use this for another bit later on so we'll hang on to this we'll put it to the side and we'll use it again so i have two tree trunks and i have two of the tops of my trees so what we're going to do is we're going to stick our tree trunk glue on the back of it glue on the back and we're going to stick them onto our card so i'm going to go taller tree here and i'm going to go shorter tree here and there are tree trunks you see our tree trunks standing up and we need to stick the leaves on as well so we'll put some glue on the back glue on the back and we'll stick on our tree trunk our tree our leaves on there like that and stick it on there like that now we have our sun hiding in behind our trees we have our grass we have our sky what else was in our our pop-up we had a little house okay so like with the suns and like with the trees with the house we're going to cut out a few houses put one sheet of paper so we're going to do the exact same thing that we did for getting our circles we want little squares this time we don't want the circles but we want the squares so we're doing the same thing we're taking it we're folding it into the middle like this so it's about half we're going to bring our line down with our finger flatten it out and then we're going to do the same we're going to bring this line over here so bring this corner to here this corner to here okay we do that we flatten it down and remember if we open that up what are we left with we're left with one fold, two folds, one, two, three pieces. Yeah? So if we take it, we put it back, we fold it back down, like we did for the trees and like we did for the sun, we're doing the exact same thing. And what are we left with? We're left with one square. With the circles, we put our circle here and we cut it out. We don't want to do that. We want to open this back up. And what are we left with? We're left with one, two, three, four five six squares and we're going to cut those squares out just by cutting it all along the fold line all the way up along the fold line all the way and we're left with our squares we do the same All the way across all the way along the fold line two and again all the way along the fold line and we have one two three four five six different houses so we have a one for six different students okay now for me I'm gonna put these aside, we'll use them again. Remember, you try and reuse everything if we can. For me, this is probably a little bit too big, this square. So I am gonna trim this down to size. So I'm gonna come in a little bit and just cut a little rectangle, a line all the way across off this side. And now I'm gonna turn it. I'm gonna do the same here. And I'm left with a smaller square. I keep these, I can use them for something else. And this is going to be our house. So we see we had our trees, our sun, our sky, and we have our house here. Okay. So we'll glue on our house. A little bit of glue on the back. And we'll put this in and stick it on. So now we have our sky, we have our trees, we have our most of our house we'll get to the rest of it now in a second and we leave that for the moment 
So, next thing we need for our house is there's a nice triangle on the top, our roof, yeah? To get to that, we need to do the same thing that we did with our sheet of black paper. If you don't have black paper, you could use brown paper. If you don't have brown paper, you could use white paper and you can color it in afterwards. So I folded this already, so you might see the fold lines in this. We want our one, two, three, four, five, six boxes again. To get that, we brought the sheet over like this. So it's halfway, straighten it out. We did the same from this side flattened it out and then we took it in the middle and we folded it again like this. Then we unfolded it all and we're left with four squares. What did we do next? We cut out those four squares. So, we're sorry, six squares. We cut them out by going, cutting along the fold line. All the way along the fold line and then cutting it in half this way. And we're left with two big squares again cutting it down the fold line all the way across the sheet boom, boom, boom. like that and then cutting the fold line again and we're left with two more and then cutting it down the fold line again and we're left with six squares okay but we actually don't need a square do we we need a triangle how do you make a triangle out of a square? You get your square and you cut it down the middle. So we want to cut it right the way across here and we'll have two triangles. Now this, see this square is a little bit smaller than we the one we just cut out. So to do that, we trimmed it down again. So the same, just cutting a little bit off the edge and then cutting a little bit off the edge like I did with my house and then what we do is we take the corner and we'll bring the corner all the way over like this, flatten it, open it up. We have a line going across and then we'll cut that. Cut along the fold line and we have two triangles. Now, remember we had six of these squares. From each square, we're cutting two triangles. So that means you have 12 rooms so with one sheet you can do 12 different students houses yeah we're going to keep our triangle we're going to use these little bits again so we put them off to the side and what do we do with the triangle it's going to be the roof on our house so we need to put a little bit of glue on it and we we'll stick our roof onto the top of our house now, I don't know if you noticed on this roof, we have little white boxes underneath. So those little white boxes are actually for our Swifts to live in. So Swifts, unlike our Swallows or our House Martins, they don't build these nests themselves. They actually used to live in the rafters of roofs. And that's a problem because now we have decided to block those rafters this is where they used to in right in where the roof meets the top of the wall and traditionally we had gaps there but now with a uh, saving energy we don't have them anymore so we have to put in little houses for our swifts to live in so if you see this man here he's putting a swift box into the walls of new buildings or if you can't do it when it's a new build then you can add boxes underneath the rafters where the Swifts can live. And that's what I have there. I have little houses for Swifts. The Swifts, they're amazing animals. They actually only land after two and a half years. When they're born, they fly for two and a half years and then they come back to Ireland. They land to make a nest and to have baby Swifts. And that's the only time they land. They're actually flying all the time other than that. They drink while they're flying, they eat while they're flying, they even sleep while they're flying. Well, they turn off a little bit of their brain and they sleep while they're flying. So to make our little swift boxes, I have just cut a tiny little strip of white paper and I'm going to do a tiny little dot like that, two little dots, 
little lines and another two little dots like that and maybe I'll go three. Okay, so little lines down the middle and then we're gonna cut off one swift box, two swift box, three swift boxes. So the one that doesn't have the lines on it, we're gonna use, that's gonna be the front of our box and that's the one with no lines is on the back of it. So to stick them on, we're gonna take the back and we're gonna rub it on the top of our glue and then we're gonna stick them up here in the rafters where they belong. One, two, three. And this is a very friendly house for our Swifts. So now, we have trees that are habitats. We have a house that's a habitat for us and a habitat for Swifts. We have our grass and we have ponds. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a pond. And the pond is a habitat for our frog. Remember we learned about frogs during the week? And if you didn't get to see those videos, you can look back at them. So, we have our pond here. To make our pond, we need our blue sheet. And like before, we're going to save time by making enough ponds for six people all in one go. So, like we did with the yellow, like we did with the green when we were cutting out our circles for our sky and our trees, like we did with the red for the house and like we did with the black, we're going to fold it over till it's about halfway, put one line down, fold it back over on itself again. So if we open this up, we'll see one, two fold marks and one, two, three spaces. And again, we're going to fold it from the bottom all the way up, bringing our corners together and flattening it out. And now you can draw around a circle and have a circular pond if you want, or you can just design your own pond. So don't go to the edges, but just come around like this and make your own puddle shape and our puddle shape pond. And then we're going to cut out our puddle shape pond. All the way around. And like before, when we have this cut out, we will actually have six different ponds. So we'll have enough ponds for six different students and you can share it with your classmate. And then that makes it easier to make all this in one go. So again, we're gonna keep this, we'll use it for something. And we have one pond, two ponds, three ponds, Four ponds, five ponds, six ponds. Now I only need one, so we'll keep them and we'll use them again. And we're gonna stick our pond here. So we want to put some glue down. And we're gonna stick our pond down. Now, if you notice, I have a little lily pad. So for my lily pad, I just took my coin on a little bit of my scrap green paper that I had. And I went around that with pen. Easier with a pen than with a marker like I did before. And with this scrap paper, you could do loads of these if you did another one here. See if there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You could go and do loads and loads. And all you need to do is cut that out. So I'm gonna, I have one I got already cut out. And this is going to be my lily pad. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the bottom of the lily pad. And I'm going to stick it in my leg. And that's where my nice frog is going to sit on his lily pad in the middle of the leg. So we have lots and lots of things. And what we want to do is put in our finishing touches. So some of the yellow that we had left over. Bit of the yellow that we had left over, I'm gonna make some windows for my house. So I just want to maybe cut a strip of yellow, and then I'm going to do one window, two windows, three windows. Okay, so remember, keep our bits, cause they come in handy. 
and some of the black that I had left over, I'm going to make a door for my house. So I'm going to do a door. And this strip, long strip, you could do loads of doors. So let's stick our doors and our windows on our house. We make a nice habitat for the humans. Door on. A window downstairs. Doesn't have to be perfect. Window upstairs. trees, our lake, habitat here, habitat here, and what do we want here? So we remember we made our little bees earlier on in the week, or if you didn't, you can look back at that video and learn how to do that. And what do bees like? Well, bees like our little wildflower section, so we'll do that. And a little pile of uh, branches and stuff that the, the bees might live in. Okay, and you can see that I've decorated this tree. It's a nice cherry blossom or an apple tree. So we'll do that. And the next thing to do is to collect our little strips that we had. So we had little strips left over, uh, like our brown. And we want to cut up our brown in tiny little matchstick size sections. left with little bits that look like sticks. I've done that with lots of with different, with the blacks, with the yellows, with some greens, with some beige, and I'm making a little pile of sticks. So what we want to do is figure out how to stick them on. So we'll put some glue there and we'll just spread them around on that. On them exactly like this and spread them around into a little log pile like a natural bug hotel. They're sticking to your fingers so you get nice and messy. We like getting messy, don't we? So that's our little log pile. That's going to be a habitat for our insects like our bees spiders and all those sort of nice insects that are very important so we'll just leave a little pile you can do a bigger pile if you want and then I said if you had a hole punch that we'll do something with the hole punch so in mine I've cut out holes and I've stuck them on for flowers I've stuck them on here now if you didn't have hole punch you could just get a pen and you could start drawing some flowers, little circles, little flowers around them, circles in the middle, petals around the side, just like this, and do them in lots of different colours, and that could be your flower patch. If you do have a hole punch, we'll get for example our yellow little strips that we have left and we'll punch out our holes many holes can all the way down and you get little holes punched out where do those holes go well if it's really good pull out the bottom and push it out and you get loads of little colored circles some there that I've done and I have some that I did earlier on so I have lots of different colors many different colors as you can see. so you know we've used the red we've used the blue uh, we've used the green and you could use all of those as little dots for our wildflower section and we're just going to put some glue down and we're going to put all these lo lovely colorful dots on here make a nice wild flower section. 
that, and that. And we'll do the same then for our tree. So we'll give it nice flowers. We'll just use the glue, put our finger on, and then poke it onto the tree. Yeah, this is messy. Oh yeah, you get the idea. So what habitats have we created? We've created a pond for our little frog. We've created this old pile where our bee can live and these wildflowers where he can get his nectar. We've created our swift boxes. We have a house for us. We have trees for different insects and animals to live in. We have a lovely big sky for our birds to fly in. Hope you had fun. I hope you were able to follow along. And I'd love to see all the things that you do. So if you want to share it on social media or send it into Green Schools, that'd be great. Just tag Green Schools in it and send it on to us. And we can see all your wonderful work. Thanks guys.